This is just because we're not perfect with our methods. Now, there were probably always people who sometimes felt like a gender dysphoria. To be able to identify if somebody died, whether they were male or female, to be able to best identify who that person was and then hopefully find the person who did the crime, mm -hmm. right? Bringing closure to those people's families and so forth. So I think that the problem when you say that sex is not binary is that you then think, okay, well, we don't have to improve our methods. Because anybody who was who we can't identify as male or female, and of course there will always be times when like you can't do the identification because the remains are not well enough preserved, and so we get better and better the more we study them, and we could, you know, get improve our methods. But there will be people who are classified as unidentified, and this is just because we're not perfect with our methods. Mm -hmm. It's not because these people were trans or that sex is on a spectrum. Um, and so I talk about that. And then I also, there's um, a misunderstanding, I would say, of um, disorders of sexual development, like individuals who have abnormal cro chromosome numbers, like a, a XYY or XXY, you know, or a missing one. Um, and these are pathologies. They're, de they're birth defects. They're yes. not another sex. It's, a, it's an insult to people to say if you have, uh, you know, one of these things that you are some kind of intersex or some kind of in-between sex or it's, it's a pathology. And these well, people are, are there, a quick question on that. Mm -hmm. Are there medical, this is something I know a little less about, but is the term hermaphrodite, is there something medical where they do say, for example, you are, in very rare cases, you are technically born between the two? It's, the, the her, hermaphrodite is now called either intersex or okay. um, disor, dif, disorders of sexual development. And the thing is that they sometimes, these kind of um, defects, abnormalities, they are... Um, Basically, um, you can think of it as, as something's gone wrong, right? Mm. So, like, for example, a female who has an enlarged clitoris that looks like a penis is still a female. Mm. She's not halfway to man. So, and so a male who, who has, you know, uh, who's born with, a, um, you know, undescended testicles, this is still a man, right? So... The, I see. Yeah. Sometimes, um, if we're just looking at soft tissue, we might make a mistake. But the ability to either produce sperm, or to, um, or to ha or to ovulate, is one of the b main factors. That then uh, controls all sorts of things. So it's it's not like there's only one thing that tells you it's male or female. And some things can go wrong. But we have five fingers on each hand. There are people who have six fingers, seven fingers mm. on these. We wouldn't say, oh, well, you know, the normal human hand has between five and seven fingers. We would just say that that's a birth defect. You know? Yeah. The defects happen. Uh, so I think, and I think that people think, oh, that's mean. But it's not mean. It's just factual. And I actually right. think it's mean to not be factual <laughs> that's it, it feels like in society and it's got to drive people who are like you you know on the scientific or or observational end of things nuts even more than the regular people like me but it seems like in society we have over deltaed not hurting people's feelings so much that as a result, we're, we're kind of hurting everybody's feelings. Yeah. Like it, it's like a circle and it's flipped back around to the other side. Yeah. And so basically, and then I ended my talk with the argument um, that, um, you know, gender, which I would define as, um, and I think this is the definition that most anthropologists would have defined it, would have used as a definition up to about five years ago or so, right? 
as the expression of someone's femininity or masculinity, which can be, you know, in between, right? So I would say gender is on a spectrum. Most often, somebody's gender aligns with their sex. But there are people who have, who, whose gender doesn't. And so one of the things that I talk about is that anthropologists, especially forensic anthropologists, should try to learn ways to identify whether somebody was transgendered and mm. specifically had they undergone feminization surgery, you know, which changes bones. Now they All the way back then? No, 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 modern day. So it's oh, okay. forensics. All right, all right, yeah, so yeah. forensics, for forensic yeah. collection. I was sick of saying, I'm like, damn, they were really up to some shit back then. No. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so just for the forensic samples. For the archaeological samples, I would say that you cannot make that determination and you just have to stick to yes. sex differences. And I think it's kind of insulting to assume that just because some a woman is buried with a male a male artifact or an assumed male artifact that she couldn't have been a normal woman. Mm. You know? <laughs> Doesn't that just mean that maybe the sex roles weren't as strict as we had sometimes sure. said? And there are some anthropologists who are who are making that argument that, you know, if you find a female with, you know, a sword, it, it means that there were women warriors. And so I think that that's a much more reasonable conclusion to draw than, oh, that individual was trans. When, you know, that's, we, we, we cannot say that about people from hundreds of years ago. And it's kind of, um, it's, it's really like um, ethnocentric to think that, like using our own culture to put it back ah, onto the others, yes. right? Yes. Like, oh, well, you know, we have trans people now, so they must have always existed. Uh, even like the term uh, two-spirit, a Native American term to mean individuals who are both male and female, that term is new. It's in, from like 1990. Um, it's, it's a renewed term. This was a, these are new concepts. And so I do think that now there were probably always people who sometimes felt like a gender dysphoria, you know, I sure. mean, just like there are people who have other, you know, mental disorders or, or mental anxieties or, you know, and I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know what percentage of those people there are and how those different um, disorders interrelate. But I think now that we do have sex uh, uh, feminization surgery, um, which doesn't change the sex, it just makes people look more feminine. Um, it's up to the forensic anthropologist to see if they can then use that to identify whether somebody was a different gender. But that doesn't mean that we should abandon the term sex, and it's yeah. very different.